Now the third application of the Bohr's theorem is remaining. Calculate the electric field due to a uniformly charged thin spherical cell. Calculate the electric field intensity due to a uniformly charged thin spherical cell. Spherical cell means what? It is a hollow sphere. Hollow sphere in which we are using the surface charge density sigma and radius of the sphere it is capital R. Now calculate the electric field density outside the cell and inside the cell. This is our topic of this year. Press the radius of the cell is capital R. Uniform surface charge density it is sigma. We want to determine electric field at different points outside and inside the cell. Outside and inside the cell. First theory it is outside the cell and the second part of this theory it is inside the cell. Okay. Now, now first topic it is about the field at point outside the cell. First of all diagram. So this is our original spherical cell whose radius is capital R. Uniformly charged. Charge is positive. Therefore, the electric field is radially outwardized. And so that this is our this is our Gaussian surface, this dotted line. It is called the Gaussian spherical surface. Gaussian spherical surface, whose radius is what small r. All the points of the Gaussian surface, it is lying at the same distance r. Therefore, at every point of the Gaussian surface, electric field is the same. Calculate the electric field at point P. Calculate the electric field at point B. You can see here, student. This whole Gaussian surface it is divided into a small area element. Area element normal to the surface delta S. Electric field is radially outward direction. So then E and delta S they are in which direction? Same direction. Therefore, first equation of flux phi is equal to vector E dot delta S can be used. Vector E dot vector delta S can be used. And another equation which can be used, Gauss law, phi is equal to Q by epsilon 0. By using these two equations, we can derive the answer of the electric field E. Okay. Now, student, there is some explanation. Consider a point P outside the cell of radius R. Consider a point P outside the cell of radius R. Calculate electric field at point P. Calculate electric field at point P. Imagine a Gaussian spherical surface of radius R passing through point P. Imagine a Gaussian spherical surface of radius R passing through the point P. Charge distribution is uniform, therefore, at all the points on the Gaussian spherical surface, electric field is the same. Charge distribution is more uniform, therefore, on the Gaussian spherical surface, at every point, the electric field is the same. Vector E and vector delta S at each point are parallel. At each point, vector E delta S are parallel. The flux, each element is E1 by phi is equal to E delta S, equation number 1. Should have delta s, this is our first delta s, same we can put another delta s, second delta s, third delta s, fourth delta s, likewise. So that summing over all element of delta s, summing over all element of delta s, that gives the total surface area of the sphere. The total surface of the surface area of the sphere, it is 4 pi r square. It is what 4 pi r square. Okay, student. Now, summing over all element of the delta S, the total flux phi is equal to dj ES. Total surface area of the sphere is equal to 4 pi r square. It is a equation number 3. So, the flux phi is equal to E into 4 pi r square. Equation number 3. Okay. Student, equa first e application of first equation is completed. Phi is equal to vector E dot delta S. Now, we are using the word Gauss law. In the Gauss law, what we record Q? Q means what? Charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface. Which density can be used? Sigma. So the power unit area charge is sigma for a 4 pi capital R square area. For a 4 pi capital R square area. 4 pi capital R square area charge is S. Sigma into 4 pi capital R square. Because by this Gaussian surface this much amount of the charge it is close. It is enclosed. Which radius can be used? Capital R. Therefore, student, the net charge enclosed by the Gaussian surface, that is Q is equal to sigma into 4 pi capital R square, equation number 4. 
According to Bohr's law, phi is equal to q by epsilon zero. Q is equal to sigma four pi r square by epsilon zero. Equation number five. Now compare equation number three and five. From the equation number three and five, we can say that it is a e four pi r square is equal to sigma four pi r square by epsilon zero. That is the next step. This one. By comparing them, from both the side four pi and four pi cancel. Therefore, remaining steps are. This four pi four pi cancel. Therefore, remaining steps are. That is e is equal to sigma by epsilon zero capital R square by small r square capital R square by small r square. It is your equation number six. So where sigma is equal to q by s, s is equal to four pi r square. This value of the sigma substitute into abo equation. Sigma now replaced by q upon four pi r square epsilon zero as it is r square by r square. Now, student, so this capital R square and this capital R square it is cancelled, so the remaining steps are e is equal to one upon four pi epsilon zero q by R square. This equation it is like a electric field intensity due to point charge, due to point charge. So that's what we can say that this all the electric field lines are concentrated at the center of the sphere. This all the electric field lines are concentrated at the center of the sphere. Therefore, we can say that. Outside the cell, this sphere it is behave like a point charge. Therefore, our answer is coming similar to the electric field energy due to point charge. Write down the vector form. That is vector is equal to one upon four pi epsilon zero q by r square into r cap. This equation is applicable for an outside the sphere. Therefore, r greater than capital R, where r cap is a unit vector, it's a direction of the electric field. Okay. So, student. First equation it is completed. The electric field outside the sphere or outside the spherical cell. Now we are going to determine the electric field intensity inside the cell. The electric flux at any point inside the cell. Electric flux, electric field, electric field. Sorry, it is a mistake. Student, write down electric field at any point inside the cell. Student, again this is our original sphere whose radius is capital R. Uniform surface charge is equal to sigma. Now your point P, it is lying within the sphere or inside the sphere. Again, through the one Borsian surface whose area is small r, and it is passing through the one point P. Calculate the electric flux passing through this area, smaller radius, to smaller radius, and calculate the electric field energy E. So, let's do it. As shown in figure, take a point P inside the cell. Assume a spherical Borsian surface of radius. R less than capital R coincides center of the cell. Like this statement gives that it is stated that the center of the both sphere it is the same. Center is not going to be changed. The flux through the Gaussian surface phi is equal to it is a e into four pi r square. Flux through this Gaussian surface that is phi is equal to e into four pi r square. It is similar to the previous case. But uh, there is a no charge. No one charge. It is enclosed by the Gaussian surface. Therefore, charge Q is equal. It is equal zero. Charge Q is equal to zero. According to Gauss law, phi is equal to Q by epsilon zero. Q zero. Therefore, phi zero. Into this equation, phi is equal to e into four pi r square. Into this equation, phi is zero. Compare these two equations. Therefore, e into four pi r square is equal to zero. Therefore, e is equal to zero. So, let's do the answer. For a charge spherical cell, inside the cell electric field is zero, but outside the cell electric field is not zero, and that is to be how much the one upon four pi epsilon zero q by r square. Okay, for a spherical cell inside the cell electric field zero, but outside outside the cell it is not zero. And the last thing, students, plot the graph E versus R for a spherical cell. So inside the cell it is zero, but outside the cell it is E proportional to one by r square. You can see that in this equation, the relation between e and r square is inversely proportional to each other. Inside the cell, is r, e is equal to zero. Therefore, r less than capital R. On the surface of the sphere, r is equal to r. And outside the sphere, r greater than r. This is the graph of the spherical cell, e versus r. Okay. Now the theory is about the electric field due to spherical cell. It is completed.